What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here. I'm Jay with the DM Network. Y'all, today I want to revisit training in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So before we get into all of that, follow me on the social media platforms, PSN Ideas, DM Gaming 5, Twitter at DM Gaming 5, Twitch at DM Gaming 06, Instagram at the underscore DM underscore network, and also on Facebook at DM Gaming 06. Also, Hit the subscribe button, man. Go ahead and subscribe, even if you haven't yet. If you're watching this video, click the sub button. It is free, doesn't cost you anything at all, not a single penny, to join the over 9,000 hype squad. Also, turn on notifications, y'all, so you don't miss a video because we upload every single day on this game. So let's go with the video. I want to talk about training. And I'm just going to show some of the new slides that's just going. Don't pay attention to that, but. I want to revisit training because we've talked about training whenever the game was still Project Z. Uh, we talked about how important training was. But now that we know more about the game and how it's structured and the detail of the game, um, that's something I want to revisit because nobody asked about training. And, and y'all like and I'll say this a million times. I wonder, do they have a list of questions that they have to get approved before they ask them, you know? And then they throw in those questions that they know they can't answer just to give it that sense of randomness in the questions. Because I fail to see how you can have a game about Goku that's wanting us to live as Goku and true to the anime, but training is not important. Now, we know from the scouter when, he pulled, when Goku pulled up the minimap that there is training grounds there are training grounds in the game and we know that throughout the anime there's times yeah he trains with king kai that's a part of the game i'm sure uh some stuff on the lookout with the hyperbolic time chamber if it goes to the cell cycle will be in game but there's also training outside of what's put into the story and that's what i'm more concerned with uh because for this game to be as detailed as it is and for this game to uh represent the anime the way that it does you know, they say that Goku, the reason they put eating and things like that in the game and eating is really a roadmap to success or failure, eating and hunting, uh, because Goku ate a lot. I would be highly disappointed if they dropped the ball when it came to training, because when you think about Goku, Goku spent more time training than he did anything else. Goku was literally not at home because he was training. Goku would leave his wife and sons at home to go train. Goku, look at all the things he did just to go train. From Dragon Ball all the way up to Dragon Ball Super. So, Cyber Connect 2, Bandai Namco. Y'all need to make training an intricate part of this game. Training needs to be just as important as eating. Now, what I don't want to happen is training doesn't give any attribute boost. What I don't want, what I would be upset if this has happened would be if training, you went to training and all it was was just like it was in Xenoverse. When you go to training in Xenoverse 2, all it is is you fighting. There's no benefit to your character from doing it aside from you learning the controls. Now, don't get me wrong with that. But there needs to be some kind of in-game representation of training. Something in-game, your stat boost somewhere. Somewhere there needs to be a stat boost from training. Now, then the question arises, well, how strong can you get from training? Because you know, we talked about the enemies being OP, but the thing that they stated was that Goku was always at a disadvantage. It didn't necessarily mean that his enemies were stronger than him, in a sense. It just means that he was at a disadvantage. Well, because, yeah, his enemies were strong. Raditz were stronger than him. Nappa wasn't. However, Goku was still somewhat at a minor disadvantage. It wasn't a disadvantage in the sense of power level. It was a disadvantage in the sense of skill. Because Raditz possessed the, the technique to, you know, kind of blow up the whole ground in a sense. And there was a few times where he caught Goku off guard. But because of Goku's power level speed and things like that, he was able to overcome those things pretty easy. 
So when they talk about the bosses being OP in a sense in the game, I don't think they're talking about them in a sense of string. They're talking about them more in a sense of mechanics. And that's one thing that they went in depth about was the game mechanics and the boss fights. There are techniques that Goku learns later on that if he had them, say when he fought Raditz, would make the boss fight so much easier but they said that they deliberately put him at a disadvantage how did they do that it wasn't power level based it was mechanically based the game mechanics that the bosses fight with put goku at a disadvantage because you don't have skills present at that point in time in the game to overcome that and also you look at the health bar raditz has 16 health bars goku if i'm not mistaken only had like two so should there be a limit on training? Now, I'm going to do another breakdown video of this because when you notice in the gameplay, I'm going to get some smaller gameplay of this. When Goku ate, uh, it increases health and his stamina, stuff like that. But if you notice at the end of the fight, there was also things that Goku could consume that would increase his attack power, his, his resistance to key. And, and like I said, we're going to do a video next time that's going to cover all of that, but I'm just kind of putting it out there to lay some groundwork, was that there are there are other attributes besides his health and his steed, his key. There are attributes such as melee damage, melee resistance, key damage, key resistance, and things like that that are also in the game that, once again, people haven't been asking about, that I've been noticing from watching the gameplay. And so, you know, it, it doesn't increase it by much. It was like a plus one, plus two here or there. And then if you notice after the fight with Raditz, um, Goku got some boost to his attributes and stuff because, of course, he did level up to level five also. Now, it also begs the question because I didn't see anything go towards his support character, Piccolo. So how do we get our support characters up to par? You know, so one thing that one of the subscribers said, I can't remember who it was, but I remember they said it. You know who you are. Said that, you know, training grounds, it would be cool if we could train with people on our team. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. You'll train with any support characters on your team. My question is, how do the support characters level up? How do they gain experience? Which leads me to believe that in some way you're going to be able to control them. And, and like I said, just to reiterate something that when people think of playable characters, they're thinking of playable characters being able, I'll be able to play with this character through the entire storyline. No. But I don't think there's instances where you're going to have to control another character. But I digress. So as far as training goes, how do we even train to level up our, our support characters and things like that? Because you're going to have to level them up. I mean, do they get experience from battle or do you have to actually go to the training grounds and train with them or fight against them or whatever? You know, those things are yet to be seen. But these are things that nobody's asking questions about, you know. So how is training going to be represented in this game? What's going to happen with the, what are the different training grounds? You know, um, you do have the Z orbs and you have those ores. You have certain elements in the game that are present that could lead to us having to have certain materials and items in order to train at certain locations. Similar to, like I said, how they do in Dokkan Battle and Dragon Ball Legends. You have these locations you can train at, but it's not like you can just go there at any point in time. Uh, people are also asking me, how would they do training in a hyperbolic time chamber? Because in the time chamber, you get a year's worth of training in one day. So that also. And then how is that time frame represented in the game? You see what I'm saying? So it's interesting. You know, there's a way that they could do training that's going to be great. You know, I say that training should be, first of all, unlimited. I don't think there should be a limit on how strong you can get from training because Goku, every time he trained, he got better. He got stronger. Now, a way that you can do that to where people aren't just stupid overpowered is, first of all, have different modes of training. Training for melee, training for key, training for defense. And with each time that you do a training session, uh, you get a point, maybe one point or half a point, something like that. Something that makes people say, okay, I train, I got better, but not so much that people just spend all game, all, you know, three, four days just training and then go and just body everything, you know, something like that. There needs to be some takeaway from training aside from just learning the game mechanics. There needs to be some in-game uh, result of your training. 
And as far as locations go, you know, that's that's special when you get into stuff like the hyperbolic time chamber. You know, how do you work the time? How do you work the you know, I think stuff like that, you should get a bigger boost. Depending on the location that you train in, you should get a bigger boost. For instance, if I train on Earth, it should just be like a plus one to whatever stat or attribute that I'm trying to focus on. Uh, whereas if I train on King Kai's planet where the gravity is times 10, it should be a bigger boost. If I get onto one of the gravity chambers that Boma has, you know, where you can go 100 and 500 times Earth gravity, you know, there should be a bigger boost. And then, of course, uh, if, if we do get to have the other world in this, things like that, you know, those things should have a bigger boost to your power level and stuff like that or to your, you know, attributes and to represent your overall power level. But like I said, what doesn't need to happen, Bandai Namco, CyberConnect2, please listen. What doesn't need to happen is that training shouldn't be like Xenoverse or any other Dragon Ball game for that matter, where all you do is go in and work on game mechanics. Training needs to be represented in the game like it was in the anime. When Goku trained, Goku got stronger. That is, you know, yeah, you could say, well, yeah, you're learning the mechanics, so in a sense, it's making you a better fighter. Yes, but I also want some in game representation of that in dokkan battle when i trained what happens my character's attributes increase you know same thing in dragon ball legends bring that same concept in a sense to this game to where when i go and train my character can level up he's gonna get experience he's gonna get you know attribute bonuses things like that need to be present in this game that is something that has been missing in every dragon ball console game since ever I could remember, even in the Budokai series, they didn't have it to where you could train and actually have attribute boost. And that's what training is. Now, I get it. It makes you better in game training because you learn the mechanics. But this is an RPG. And that's something that has been missing from Dragon Ball games is training. And if you're going to make a game about Goku, if you're going to make a game about him and you're going to make it true to the anime, you need to have some result from training there needs to be some kind of attribute boost somewhere because goku trained his butt off if you're going to have attribute boost from food you need to make training a staple of that as well also and i leave with this that if you don't train enough that you begin to decrease in attributes because that's true to the anime when gohan didn't train what happened he got weaker okay what do y'all think down in the comment section down below till next time thanks for watching peace